If you wanted a signing that would basically guarantee your club a league title and a Champions League trophy, it might sound crazy, but perhaps the most important position for the job is a defensive midfielder. That's because Clarence Seedorf is the only footballer in history that has ever lifted the Champions League trophy with three different clubs. But to quantify the overall brilliance of Clarence Seedorf as just a defensive midfielder is, in truth, pretty disingenuous. Because playing the role of a deep line playmaker is only a fraction of the things he did as one of the most unique footballers to have ever laced his boots. As while there have been many great jack of all trades midfielders throughout football history, Seedorf was not just great at doing what he did, he was absolutely world class at doing everything, both on the attack, defense, and everything in between. The Swiss Army Knife of football. How many midfielders can you think of in the last 30 years that truly were so technically skilled with the ball at their feet, so tough and hard to beat in duels, incredibly intelligent on the pitch to make his teammates better, with a vision to create and to find beautiful passes in high volume, and nearly ever losing possession? But not just that. How many can do what I just mentioned with the addition of seemingly endless stamina, an impressive stature, incredible strength, ability to regularly take on defenders off the dribble, and lastly, score goals like this every season against the biggest opposition. In my opinion, there were only less than a handful. But even then, my words can't paint a clear picture that would do enough to give justice to the brilliance of Clarence Seedorf. And although being one of the most complete footballers in history, he really is underappreciated. You hear of all-time great midfielders like Zidane, Modric, Iniesta, Xavi, and Pirlo. But the brilliance of Seedorf was genuinely up there right by them. With the only difference being, and I can't stress this enough, being that Seedorf can do it all on both ends. As a goal scorer, he had one of the best long-range shots in his generation. An incredibly powerful shot mixed in with calm and accurate aim and finishing. Seedorf shots at times looked like they had so much violence behind them that it momentarily made people forget the grace and elegance of his overall game. Because as a playmaker, his passes had the perfect weight and placement, casually making passes back then with the same creativity that many modern footballers now would feature in highlight reels on social media for doing, with a vision and execution that rival the, even the greatest passers of the game. I genuinely believe that. Seedorf's football IQ was as elite as any midfield legend you can think of, and it's incredibly rare that you'll see a midfielder as diverse as him that excited the crowd and not just for his ability to genuinely attack with his dribble and beat defenders with wonderful touch, skill, and control, but also from his ability to avoid the press and to get the ball out of harm's way. Even when compared to other jack-of-all-trade midfield legends like Rude Hulet and Frank Reichard, Seedorf had insane work ethic and discipline, which only further added to his longevity that would far surpass his fellow Dutch legends and allowed him to play in the highest level up to his late 30s. Because while guys like Cristiano Ronaldo and Zlatan Ibrahimovic are often praised for the way that they took care of their bodies and trained incredibly hard, leading to a longer career, before them, the perfect example of aging like fine wine was Clarence Seedorf. And it was that very same training and work ethic mixed in with that pure football intelligence that allowed him to be one of the most efficient defensive midfielders the game had ever seen. Because rarely would you ever see maestros like him equally having just so much talent on the defensive end as well, knowing how to best position themselves, intercept balls, and make smart tackles, all while doing so in a level that was so elite that the opposition and their fans could only sigh in frustration, knowing that he was doing so in a clean and sportsmanlike level, only ever being sent off twice in his entire 22-year-long professional career. He was a player that embodied what it really meant to be a midfielder. There's probably no better example of someone who can play literally any specific role and still be absolutely world-class wherever he's at. And his nickname was only fitting to describe his overall brilliance as a footballer. No, no other than Il Professore or The Professor, a man whose talents and knowledge had never been questioned. 
teaching fans, opposition, and teammates alike what it truly meant to be a midfielder for three different decades. And when you look at how his career started, it was obvious that Clarence Seedorf was a genius the moment he first stepped onto the pitch. At the age of 14, Real Madrid wanted to sign him on board their youth team, but it was his parents that didn't allow him to go, as they believed that he should stay and finish school in Holland. But perhaps it was fate, because at only 16 years old, the youngster who would eventually be recruited by Ajax would become the youngest to ever debut for the club. And as early as 17 years old, his manager Louis van Gaal would quickly recognize his talent, making a literal teenager a bona fide starter in what was back then one of the top five leagues in Europe. In the earlier half of his career, Seedorf would mainly be deployed as an attacking or central midfielder. And in just his second year with the club, the 17 and a half year old would win the league title, Dutch Cup, and Dutch Super Cup. And at the end of the season, being named the Dutch football talent of the year. But what was even more mind blowing is that at just 18 years old, he wasn't just a bona fide starter. He looked like a veteran playing right alongside Frank Rijkaard and Edgar Davids. And this Dutch midfield trio that included a teenager was regarded as one of the best midfield lineups in the world. Incredibly strong, not only with possession and attack, but also an absolute wall on the defense. And this would help Ajax win back-to-back -back league titles and make it all the way to the Champions League final, where they would prove victorious over defending champions AC Milan, putting the Italian dynasty away for several years and being crowned European champions. Imagine, when was the last time you saw an 18 year old playing a significant role in the Champions League final? It was clear that Seedorf's football skill, intelligence, and maturity was well beyond his years, resulting in Seedorf earning back-to-back -back Dutch Football Talent of the Year awards. Dominant in both Europe and Eredivisie, a large part of that Ajax squad decided to stay in the club, as they were still one of the best squads in the world. But the young Seedorf was eager to challenge himself, seeking to make a bigger name in what was considered the best league in the world at the time. Serie A. And it was no other than fellow Dutch legend Ruud Hulet, who would convince the young Seedorf to join his former club, Sampdoria, giving him a taste of what it was like to play in a much more competitive league for a much weaker side, and making the jump to really start leading and controlling the midfield with him at the focus. And while the club would finish at the same spot it did the season before he joined at 8th in the league, in his only year with the club, the 19-year-old Clarence Seedorf played absolutely brilliant, gaining respect throughout Serie A for his individual play and proving that he could do all the things he did at Ajax, even without such a strong squad supporting him. And that was enough to convince Real Madrid that he was indeed the missing piece and perfect addition to their midfield after finishing sixth in La Liga in hopes of once again winning silverware. In fact, as Seedorf recalls when he was playing in Italy after his last match of the season, he was in a car parking lot where Real Madrid's soon-to-be manager Fabio Capello literally asked him to come to Real Madrid. And from his very first match, Seedorf surpassed the expectations of management and fans, playing in every single league match and helping Real Madrid with his exceptional technique and vision. At just 20 years old, playing alongside Fernando Redondo, Victor, and sometimes Guti, it was the young Seedorf who was really the key element behind Real Madrid's midfield. His impact on the club was clear as day, as Real Madrid would go from sixth place just the season before to once again winning the La Liga title with the help of Clarence Seedorf. Aside from Raul, who really played as a second striker, it was the 20-year-old Seedorf who would make the most appearances of any midfielder for the club, showing you just how invaluable he was for then-manager Fabio Capello. Then the very following season, Madrid's new manager, Jupp Heinks, would see the very same value in Seedorf, as the 21-year-old was given the most time on the pitch of any player on the squad. Imagine any big club today having a 21-year-old as your most relied on midfielder. Yeah, that was the impact that Seedorf had. In just his second season with Real Madrid, Seedorf would once more be an invaluable piece in helping Real Madrid lift silverware. And this time, they would achieve European glory, allowing him once more to lift yet another Champions League trophy. 
However, since then, Real Madrid did not seemingly give Seedorf the value that he believed he was worth. And there were also rumors that Real Madrid were heavily interested in signing Zinedine Zidane from Juventus. And their offer to the Italian giants included no other than Seedorf. Also, Real Madrid would foolishly decide to change management to the more forgettable Gus Hiddink and John Toshak. Yeah, remember these guys at Madrid? Well, I wouldn't blame you if you didn't. Well, some Real Madrid fans don't remember either, because both were sacked after a single season, and for whatever reason, they had the moronic idea of deploying Seedorf as a winger, completely disregarding the role that Seedorf did his best in, all to fit in more entertaining midfielders like Guti. And thus, Seedorf decided that it was once again time to make another step in his career. Clubs like Man United and Arsenal expressed great interest, but ultimately, Seedorf decided to once more try and prove himself in Italy. His inner Milan side, however, was seemingly cursed with injuries. If you can remember, this was around the time when Ronaldo the Phenomeno went through probably the worst injury in his career. And Ronaldo was in large part a big reason why Seedorf decided to give Inter a chance. Now, this was an inner squad whose number one scoring option due to Ronaldo's injuries was Christian Vieri, who don't get me wrong, was pretty decent in his own right, but far from a world-class talent. And although the individual genius and brilliance of Seedorf was still there, even scoring some of the best goals in his career, this brief two and a half years with Inter Milan was really the only time that Seedorf wasn't able to get any silverware since leaving his teenage years. But it would be AC Milan that took the biggest advantage of this situation and decided to steal him away from their eternal rivals, adding Seedorf to a side that would go on to create one of the most dominant club dynasties of the mid-2000s. But with AC Milan, instead of playing a more typical attacking or central midfield role, they would choose to play Seedorf a little more defensively. He had the stamina and creative skills to push the ball forward when the team needed it, whether it was his still crazy playmaking vision or finishing. But on the defensive end, he was a player who would endlessly press, intelligently intercept passes and break up counterattacks, and would always be there to bail his teammates out of pressure and guarantee that once he received the ball, he wasn't going to lose it. And along with Pirlo's genius and Gattuso's relentlessness, Seedorf would bridge these two midfielders perfectly creating one of the best midfield trios in the 2000s. And in just his first season with AC Milan, Seedorf was invaluable in their Champions League push, helping them make it all the way to the final, where eventually he would lift his third Champions League trophy. The following years would continue to bring success for Seedorf and AC Milan, where he would end up spending 10 years with the club as an undisputed starter who was almost never injured. And while Seedorf became the only footballer in history to have ever won three Champions League titles with three different clubs, Clubs, it wouldn't be his last. As in the 2006 2007 season, not only would he make over 50 appearances, but this time, then manager Carlo Ancelotti decided to move him back up a little higher and give him back his more attacking original role. And the result was a crucial goal against Bayern Munich to put them ahead in the Champions League quarterfinal. And in the semi-final against Manchester United in a young Cristiano Ronaldo, he would score yet another goal, making it 4-3 on aggregate, helping him and AC Milan reach one last Champions League final, where they would go on to beat a young Liverpool, and Seedorf would lift a fourth Champions League trophy. And in January 2014, the 37-year-old Clarence Seedorf would announce that it was time to hang up his boots. A career that started in 1992 and ended in 2014, spending three decades winning four Champions League titles, 20 trophies, scoring 143 goals, and playing almost a thousand matches. A man who always had class, both on and off the pitch. One of the most underappreciated all-time midfielding greats. This was the story of the professor.